So here it is. This is what it used to be, a scroll view showing the dates in a year. And here it is now, a swipeable view showing one week at a time. The change looks simple, but under the hood is kind of difficult for me as a beginner. But I managed to research and combine different techniques. It is not a big progress into the app, but the concept here is very important as this behavior is used in different areas throughout the app. So we will learn how to create a custom reusable container view. Let's bring back the weak array we have here at the top. I will lay them out again with equal widths using the geometry reader. I am going to remove the scroll view because this is not the correct implementation in this app. I'll remove all of it and just keep the H stack. I will display again the weekdays and let's again divide the width equally. I did this before by using geometry reader to get the width of the device. Then divide it equally among the seven days of the week. I will do it differently this time. I will not use geometry reader and instead just use a spacer and let the spacer do its work to allocate spaces in between the days. I will push this to the top as well with a spacer and put some proper padding. Now, I will extract this single week view into a subview by using option click extract subview. I will name this week view. I will move the week array into this subview. So right now, this week view just displays the week from Monday to Sunday. And I can put another week view in this V stack and it will show another one. Let's put this in a V stack for now. What V stack actually is, it has a parameter called content. And content can be anything that is a list of views or what we call a view builder. So here, I wanted to create our own custom stack where we can swipe at the list of views and show it one view at a time. So like this V stack, I will create swipeable stack. Let's create one and I'll start with just one week view first. Our swipeable stack is a view, of course, and like any views, it will have a body. I want this swipeable stack to accept a list of views, in this case, the week view. So I will create a var here that is called content, and the type of this var is a function that will return whatever. And I'll call this type content with big C. Actually, we can name it whatever we want, but as best practice, we'll name it content. Now this type does not exist, so how do we use it? I'll place it here after swipeable stack with angle brackets. You will learn more about this if you read about generic types in Swift. Content is a generic type, so our swipeable stack can accept whatever this function that returns a generic type content, and we don't know what it might be. This content is what we will place here in body. Now, swipeable stack is a view, and content in the body is something we don't know what it is. That is why we get this error message that content doesn't conform to view. Now, if I say, you know what, content is actually a view, which is correct because what we put inside the swipeable stack are views. In this case, the weak view, which is a view. Now the error goes away, and we now have a weak view inside our custom swipeable stack. Now, what if we have a condition in our swipeable stack, like an if statement? Or what if I have another weak view? Our swipeable stack doesn't work now, because at the moment, it can only accept whatever the content is, which is a view. And if we have a list of views, or what we call a view builder, then it won't work. But if I just put a wrapper here in content and tell the compiler that this is actually a view builder, now it works again. Let's put some color in our weak views, a blue and yellow. If I put this in an H stack, it will try to fit both views in the entire width space. 
But what we want in Swipeable Stack is to display one view at a time. But how do we do that? This content, our view builder, returns both views together. And there is no way we can have access to these individual views unless we change the way content is created. I'll pass some data, an array, and for each element in the array, we create our content. So let's create this array of weeks. I will make this a string for now, and for each week, I will create week view content. So our swipeable stack can now accept some data. So I will name this whatever data because I don't know what it is. All I know, it's an array of whatever type of data. So we have another generic type, this whatever type of data. And I will place it here in the angle brackets as well, so I can use it. I will now create an initializer for our swipeable stack. The parameters are data, which is the array of whatever type of data, and content, the content, which is a function, which now has a parameter data, which we will now put as an input parameter in this function that is returning a content, which we said can be whatever as long as it's a view. It may take a while to get around this at first and will take some practice and experimentation to get it. In our initialization of swipeable stack, I will initialize the var whatever data with the data that was passed as a parameter. And let's put this view builder in the initialization of content. Now we can do for each on the array of whatever data and for each of the element we will call to create the content. There is an error that it wants our whatever data array to be hashable and we can do that easily inside this angle brackets. Now our swipeable stack, it is showing three occurrences of weak view because we have three elements in our data array. Now that I have access to the individual weak view, instead of showing all three of them at once, I will show them one weak view at a time. And I can do this with geometry reader. I can get the full width of the space allocated and make that the frame width of each weak view. Now our weak views are arranged in an H stack one after the other. And it is showing just one weak view for now as each view has a total width of the space allocated. We cannot see that right now. So I will put a drag gesture in this H stack so we can see the next weak view when we drag it. When I drag, I will be changing the X offset position. For example, if I put minus 100, this will move the frame 100 pixels to the left. I will create a var that will tell us how much X offset position will be made when we drag. In the drag gesture, we can get the value of how much X position has changed as a result of the drag via this value translation. Okay, the drag is working, but we really can't see the individual weak view. I will create them one by one instead. The swipeable stack will always just have three weak views. The current, the previous, and the next. And they will all have the same width, which is the total allocated width. I will put some colors so we can clearly see them, green, blue, and yellow. We can only see the first one, which is green, but as I drag, we can see the next view. Let's remove this default padding first by making the spacing equal to zero. When the drag ends, I will show the next view by moving the X position minus the total width. I can see the next view, which is blue, after I drag. Let's put some animation so that the transition will be smooth. Now, how do I know whether to offset to the left or right? 
This is by how much drag towards the left or towards the right is made. And we can get this via this predicted end translation. What I will do now is to show the current data in the current week view. And if there is data previous to the current one, and I can check this if the current index minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, meaning we are not at the very beginning of the array, then there is data previous to the current one. If there is previous data, I will adjust the offset to the left so that the current view, the middle one, is always the default view that will show first. I can also check if there is data after the current one. I can check if the current index plus one is not at the edge of the array, meaning there is still data after the current one. Now, let's get the swipe to work. If I did not swipe enough to the left or right, then the view would just go back to its default position. Now I need to detect if the animation has completed because I wanted to reset the views back to their original positions. Now there is no way to do that at the moment, but I know the animation only lasts 0.3 seconds. So I can trigger a timer at the start of the animation and after 0.3 seconds, I will reset the offset position and the data index. as the default data to display is now either the next one or the previous one, depending on the drag gesture. Finally, we will only allow drag to previous view if there is previous data, and next view only if there is next data. I will now grab the dates in a week, given a date. I will try with today's date. I will put this as an input into the array, so the array only has one element, which is today's date, and will pass that into the week view when we create it inside the swipeable stack. So going back to the playgrounds, let's set up the date. My date string is August 1st. What I want is an array of all the dates in the week of August 1st. So that will be from August 1st, which is Monday, all the way to 7th of August, which is a Sunday. Remember, the calendar is ISO 8601, so it starts with Monday. Then I get the current week. It is the 31st week of the year. Then I'll get the starting date of the week, which will return 1st of August. Then I will get the range of the week. This will return range from 1 to 7, which is the number of days in a week. Then I'll just create the dates by adding one day to 1st of August. Now we have the array of the days of the week. I will just create this function in the model and in the view model. Now I have the date passed as a parameter into the week view. I will just get the days of the week for a given date. Wait, I don't have the day planner view model in here in week view. How do I pass the view model into different views in the app? So one way is to convert our view model instead of an observed object. I will change this into a state object and create an environment object for it. Now any views who want the view model can get it by creating a var and wrapping it with environment object. Now I can access the view model in week view. I will now do a for each on each days in the week and display it in the vstack with the day Monday to Friday at the top. Now that we know how to display the week 
given a single date. How about I create an array of dates of all the Mondays in the year and pass that to the swipeable stack to create the week view. Let's go back again to playgrounds. I will start with 1st of January. What I want are the Mondays of the year. So 1st of January is not a Monday. The Monday is the 27th of December. Let's grab the current week of 1st of January. So it is actually the last week of 2021. Then I will get the start of the week, which is 27th of December. Then I will create the range of all the weeks in the year. Then I will create all the Mondays by adding one week starting from 27th of December. Now I have all the Mondays of the year. So same thing, I will just create this function in the model and call it start date of weeks in a year. Then we'll just copy the same code we have in the playgrounds. Now, our array here are now all the Mondays of the year, and here we have a swipeable week view. There are still improvements we want to do next time. We want the month and year above to change when we swipe and it changes to a different month. But for now, I am happy with this outcome. I hope you will be able to use this swipeable stack in your project. Please like the video as it helps me get the videos reach more developers. As usual, I think this video is getting long, so I will end it here and I will continue next time. Happy coding!